question is always asked, where are the what whistleblowers? What they'll do is they'll say, okay, we can see that you're very stressed out by all this, and we want to help you. So we're going to refer you to the Office of Medical Services so you can undergo some psychological counseling to help you sleep at night and make you better and get rid of your anxiety. So we're going to set up an appointment for you to meet with a psychologist. Now, where do you suppose that goes? The interview's over. The document is falsified. Employee is paranoid, obsessive, compulsive, and disgruntled. That goes in the file, so if it ever does get to the Congress or Senate or court, they pull out and say, well, look, he, he or she went under an evaluation, and they're basically unstable. End of story. Shut the case down. Part of an intentional process. I uh, was a decorated CIA officer. The part of that is in the book, which we fought to get out. Initially, they told me I could never say I worked there. Uh, we fought them, and we beat them on that one, and we got some things in the book uh, uh, eventually. Um, I went on uh, deadly assignments uh, for my, my agency and, and my country. I loved my country. I was very dedicated to the agency. Some of those assignments, uh, they told us we may not come back from. Uh, no problem. Uh, that's what we did. But the higher I got up in the agency, the more I began to see uh, illegal, unconstitutional, sometimes criminal activity that the agency and some other sectors of the shadow government, I call it, were doing things that were illegal and unconstitutional. Why aren't people coming out and blowing the whistle on it if it's so dangerous? Uh, the NSA surveillance program, if it wasn't for Edward Snowden, who both the Democratic and Republican Party have uh, come out publicly and said they, they want him assassinated. If it wasn't for N N uh, Edward Snowden, would we know about the NSA spying program? That was collecting 1.5 billion pieces of information on you and me and our telephones and our in internet, internet communications, our emails. That's what they were doing, not on terrorists, on us. And they were storing it in the Utah Data Center, which is still there forever. So if there's something you do later on that they're not real happy with, they've got your emails, your text, your cell phone conversations, and everything still stored in the database. And all that stuff, by the way, is still there on you, not on terrorists. Every single American citizen. So this is what we have here. Uh, we have a government that is functioning outside the Constitution. This is the size of the secret government. I call it the shadow government. There are some people call it the deep state. Take, take your pick. Same thing. Uh, we've got the CIA, functions covert programs. They're probably the most out of control because their charter is so loose. The IRS has covert programs. FBI, Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, Department of State, Department of Justice, the NSA, and I have added the National Weather Service and NOAA because as Dane, I think, told you, the National Weather Service and NOAA are now binding their employees with secrecy agreements so they cannot talk without penalty of prison about some of these climate programs that they're doing. That's that's called a red flag. That was wrong. A lot of inspector generals, now I have to give some kudos to the state IG because they, they helped me expose a, one particular operation. The, uh, my agency's IG, I submitted a 15-page complex documented report documenting my family was exposed to toxins, my wife was bleeding out of her gums, she was bruising all over her body, she lost her short-term memory, she was on morphine because of severe headaches because of the toxins. They didn't want people to know about that she was being exposed to. That's what they didn't want people to know. Um, so I submitted this document to the IG. Look, I, I did secret tests. I ran samples out to uh, certain reputable universities. I secretly flew my son out for medical evaluation with a well-known immunologist. I got it all back, put it all together, went into their desk, laid it on there and said, tell me there's no toxins on this base. So they got the IG involved. We, we go into the, a big meeting with the IG, and I said, bring out my investigation, my report. Oh, well, we don't know where it is. <laughs> now, I've been told by other officers that the roof was being raised off headquarters because of this case. Reporters were calling from all over the place trying to get information. They, the headquarters was freaking out. They knew darn well what this case was. So I, I pressed them. I had my two courageous attorneys there, Clint Blackman and George Hardy, and I always say this, God bless you guys. I love you, man. They, they had... They had courage, and I hope someday they get the credit for that. But we got the IG finally to pull out my investigative report that had all this evidence in it. What did we get? We got a one-page document written in someone else's handwriting that said that there was no problem at all, and their investigation had revealed nothing. 
So, are IGs always objective and honest? If they have interest in that organization, I can tell you right now, no. So what do you do? I saw this happen to me personally. Uh, my wife, and especially my oldest son, were almost terminal. They covered it up. They told me I could never say I work for the CIA. They told them they could never tell anybody about their case because of the state secrets privilege. What do you do in a case like that? Well, there's only one thing to do. You, you write an expose. So I wrote from the Company of Shadows. Not for self-glorification, trust me. There was none of it in that. It was one heck of a battle. When the book was written, I'll show you an expert, uh, excerpt. rather. This is one of the excerpts from the book, one of the pages of many. There is nothing classified in this excerpt at all. Nothing. It's talking about blackout began receiving threatening letters accusing them of security violations and commanding them not, not to exchange correspondence with our family. And, and on, just a system that they use of intimidation is what it's talking about. And they blacked it out. Now, based on an executive order issued by President Ronald Reagan, for the CIA to black information out because of negligence or because of its embarrassing is illegal. It's criminal to do that. Violation of the Constitution, supreme law of the land. Well, they did. So, here's another excerpt from the book. Now, this talks about what they do to the families. They take away their names. They give them fake names like the Doe family. There's fake names here that are blacked out. They're not even their real, real names. They're fake names, but they black them out. Instead, I want you to know that they use fake names to cover the identities of innocent uh, uh, mothers and children who have been exposed to serious toxins in a secret government program. Uh, this picture that I put in the book uh, has a lot of meaning. I'll explain that to you in a moment. Down at the bottom, blackouts, identities, are, and case facts are hidden in secret. That's not even their name behind that blackout. It's a general term. They didn't want anybody to know that they do this to civilians. Real important. So what did I do? I call this in chapter 25, the tyranny of secrecy. We have a tyrannical government that is now functioning with a huge abuse of secrecy and silencing anybody that will stand against it by classifying everything. This photograph here, <clears throat> when I wrote the book and they blacked these things out, I had a decision to make. What am I going to do about this? I swore an oath to the Constitution. Who's going to win, government intimidation or the Constitution? Well, it's a painful choice, but it's kind of an easy one. So I built a code into the book. Uh, I refer to it as a shadow code. And there are things in it like this. This, is the, this shadow is the actual shadow of the young man that almost died from this toxic exposure. They didn't know whose shadow that was. They do now. Down here, it says, my family was devastated by our government's abuse of blackout. They don't want you to know how they tried to silence me. They blacked it out, although it's out there in the public and other places. There's whole, there's studies this thick written on that, that thing. So I built the code into the book. It's a numerical code, and it weaves through there. And, it, and if you follow the numerical sequence, it opens up what these blackouts actually say and what they use to try to silence our family, okay? I learned one thing. If you play by their rules, they will destroy you. If you realize that freedom is only in the truth and you come out full bore and just lay it out there, that's probably why I'm still alive today. <laughs> you go out on the internet and you see things like, I'm surprised this guy's not in a dumpster. <laughs> well, I'm still alive because I came out. I have this thing called the Constitution and Freedom of Speech. I came out full bore and made this stuff public. Uh, if you fear them, <clears throat> they have you. That's how they do it. They, they manipulate the American people through intimidation and fear. Do not fear. If you don't fear the government, you're, you're truly free. There are the whistleblowers. I come from the belly of the beast. I was an interviewer, interrogator. I was a counterintelligence agent. I was a polygraph examiner. I was an internal investigator. And I was on and on and on. And so I know this system and I know it well. And then I experienced it personally. Why don't people come out in these secret programs that they know are illegal and unconstitutional. Why don't they come out and blow the whistle and tell people what's going on? Well, this is why. The U.S. government, every secret operational program that it has, forces the employee or coerces the employee, the person, into signing what is called a secrecy agreement, non-disclosure agreement. 
Now, back in the original days, the secrecy agreement was, was created to predict, pr protect legitimate sources and methods, military technology and things like that. That was okay. That was fine. The secrecy agreement protected us when we went out on the field because if they found out who we were, we wouldn't just be killed, we, we would have been tortured. So it protected our identities, protects the identities of troops in the field doing movements out uh, during wartime. That's how it started. But it's been taken and it's been turned into a monster where the secrecy agreement is now being used as the ultimate tool of intimidation. Every employee that gets a job and, and obtains knowledge of these covert programs uh, the Air Force geoengineering program, in my opinion, has to sign this agreement. What the agreement says is, if you disclose anything that you know about this program, you can be terminated or you can force criminal penalties. In other words, you can be put in prison. Good friend, we hope will be speaking at our next event, was put in prison by the CIA for two years that he exposed the torture program, which was a lot more than waterboarding, folks. As a matter of fact, they, they got almost nothing out of, out of waterboarding. People died. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was bad. Anyway, he came out publicly, publicly talked about the torture program, made one mistake, one wrong word. They convicted him, John Kirikow, and they put him in prison for two years. Modern day hero. Just got out. So served two years for coming out and trying to alert people about what was going on. I was talking to some, somebody in the back. I have to watch every single word I say because they are just waiting for one thing. And so it's a constant screen. You don't want to give them uh, any, any ammunition to put in their, in their gun. So there's binding power penalties and threats for the secrecy agreement. That stops 99% of the people right there. Oh, man, I'm not going there. I'll just look the other way. Uh-uh. I don't, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want my life destroyed. Now, there is a massive mammoth complex secret mechanism in the US government. It's called the intelligence community. It is so powerful that not even the Congress or the Senate can control it. Matter of fact, it controls them. It does whatever it wants. They have these uh, Senate investigations and they'll come and they say, sorry, Senator, we can't tell you what we're doing because uh, y you don't have the, the agency clearance. And that's where it's shut down. Benghazi, is an example. The NSA surveillance program is an example. Where did those go? Nowhere. And I sit on the Citizens Commission of Benghazi, and that's a, that's a whole other story, maybe the next conference. Anyway, it began in 1948. I talk about this in the book real quickly. An Air Force B-2 bomber had four RCA civilian engineers on board. The plane went down in a horrible accident. A couple of the pilots parachuted out. Parachuted out. All four engineers were killed in a horrible crash. The widows of the engineers demanded to know from the Air Force why the plane crashed and why their husbands died. The Air Force came back and said, well, we can't tell you that because it's secret. Turns out it was gross negligence on behalf of the pilot. Drove the plane into the ground. Hit the wrong flaps, hit the thruster in, instead of the opposite, and literally drove that bomber right into the, in the pharma. I've been to the site. I have pictures of it in the book. So the families pushed it and said, no, 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 it wasn't classified. You can't do that. We're suing you uh, for the death of our husbands. So the United States government, the executive branch, created what's called the state's secrets privilege. The state's secrets privilege was literally, the wording was derived from the, the monarchy of the King of England, which gave the King of, of England absolute power to shut down any case they deemed was unacceptable, to shut it down. The state secrets privilege was used to shut down these four widows' case. It was shut down. It was sealed in federal court so that no one, including Congress, the Senate, and their attorneys would ever see it. That's where this all began in, in 1948, and it's gotten far worse from there. People who signed this binding secrecy agreement, which I have signed several of in several compartments as well, they, don't, they are not told and they do not know that when they sign that agreement, they are giving up all of their constitutional rights. They have no right to, to trial. They have no right to a jury trial. They have no right to sue the government if they are exposed to toxins and made sick or their family or anyone else. They have lost all their rights to due process. They're not told that. I found that out the hard way when I tried to sue the government and they came back and said, sorry, pal, you don't have any rights. So I, did, I took a different course, which I'll tell you about here in a moment. So. That's how they shut them up, too. There is within the federal, each federal agency. Now, remember, since 1948, this, this procedure has been perfected. 
It is a science to destroy a whistleblower from the very beginning. They come to a supervisor. They may even have the courage to call their congressman or senator about this illegal operation. And the first thing that happens is they start getting promotions denied, even though they're top performers. Their prom promotions are denied. They're giving em given embarrassing assignments where they're put in the corner of a building somewhere so that everybody knows that they're being penalized for this. If they continue to blow the whistle and push, push it even farther, they'll do things like this. I have seen this personally. They'll raise the interest rates on the credit union loans so that their cars and other loans are unaffordable. If they try to pull out their retirement funds to provide for their family, especially in the case where they've been driven out of the organization, the organization will block their retirement funds so that so the family will be destroyed financially. Now, that is a felony. For a federal agency to, to deny the retirement funds of an employee is a felony. I've seen that. 9-11, we don't have time to go into that. Uh, I just want to say this. I teach criminal investigations at a university. 9-11 was immediately labeled a terrorist event, and there was a reason for that. When you label it a terrorist event, it stops any sort of criminal investigation right in its tracks. If they would have done a criminal investigation of 9-11, it would have uncovered things uh, that would have painted a whole different picture about why those buildings came down. I would encourage you to, uh, architects and engineers for truth have done an outstanding video about Tower 7. <laughs> Tower 7 was not hit by a plane, and it came down under controlled definition. Now, I'm a former CIA analyst. And I'm saying that based on a whole lot of research. Uh, that was not done by, by a plane. Uh, and just finally, when the towers came down, hundreds of tons of metal, steel, marble, and con concrete turned to dust before it hit the ground. So much so that there was almost no seismic activity when the buildings hit the ground. It was all dust. You can see steel girders as they come down, if, if you, any of you have seen that, literally vaporize and turn to dust as they fall down. That is not natural. All we're going to say there. I recommend you look into a criminal investigation of 9-11 and get past the, the terrorist narrative, which has been a favorite one for decades. All of this within these federal agencies, the NSA, the CIA, the DI, any, any agency that, in, especially the covert agencies that engage in, in nefarious operational uh, 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 programs, there is a culture of fear. You guys out there that still work there know what I'm talking about. Everyone, I used to call it the paranoia palace. Everybody inside there is afraid of saying anything because they know about this system. They will destroy you. They'll destroy your career. They'll destroy your finances. They'll destroy your family. They'll take you all the way down as far as they can, even from the outside. You remember Gary Webb, who exposed the CIA drug running uh, operation down in Central America? Anybody know about that out there? Gary Webb eventually was driven to suicide. Remember that? Did anybody see the movie? Yeah, yeah, you see the movie. They destroyed his career, his reputation, his life, his family, and then he was found dead of a gunshot wound in a hotel room. The perfect crime. Drive him to suicide, and there's no culpability, and your problem is gone. Frank Olson jumped out of uh, in the, the uh, CIA LSD program, jumped out of the, uh, I think it was a six-story window of a hotel room, committed suicide because he had found out that the, the CIA was drugging people with LSD without their knowledge. What a coincidence. Frank commits suicide. Uh, John F. Kennedy, again. How far will they go? Will they go that far? I think, I think we all know the answer to that. And in a constitutional government, uh, that's alarming. At, at, at the there are certain major newspapers, of which if I mentioned their name, you would know them. These are national papers that are uh, communicating and directly connected, in this case, to the CIA and, in some cases, to the NSA. So, if a whistleblower decides, I'm freedom of the press, man, you know, I'm going to the press and I'm going to report to the press this illegal stuff that I've seen. So they call up XYZ National Newspaper, and if you do enough checking, you'll find out who that is. I want to tell you my story. I want to tell you what I've seen. In this case, the reporter got right on the phone, contacted the CIA, and told them what this person had just reported for the story. Uh, that has been done several times with this paper. They, they communicate with the CIA regularly regarding what they're going to publish and what they're not going to publish. <music> the contract, $5 million contract. They are now joined with the CIA in QTEL. What are they doing? 
They're doing research on trends on the Internet and Facebook. They're monitoring the Internet is what they're doing. Let me just, let me just break that down for you. Now, do you think any of the Google executives can talk about the program? Do you think maybe they made them sign an agreement before they got the five million? Uh, yeah. Why don't you hear anything about that? Why, why isn't Google saying anything about that? Well, that's why. <music> Last thing I said to them, I said, the same courage that made me a good CIA officer here with you is the same courage that is enabling me to stand up against you now. And that's the last thing I told them before I walked out the door. And they know it. So I want you to remember this as I close. When people fear their government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, when they fear you, there's liberty. And that's what it's all about.